So we find ourselves into the second half of our Beatitude series. We're four weeks down already. Um, and this week we start the fifth week. And uh, last week we spoke about the righteousness of God. And um, for those who seek the righteousness of God, um, who hunger and thirst for righteousness, uh, they will be filled. Um, and this week we start to, to journey down the mountain. For those who want to go deeper with God and really make an impact for God, um, we need to, to start uh, living out our faith. And this is where we are this week because um, those who, who show mercy um, will receive mercy mercy from God. And, and it's a big step in, in our, our journey because it's all about forgiveness and about um, extending what God has given to us. Um, and that's where we find ourselves. So the characteristics of going up the mountain was really about um, how we can connect with God and how God can really do a work within us. Um, and now we start to uh, live beyond ourselves um, and uh, start to look at those around us differently through the eyes of, of Christ. So. Yeah, so we've ascended up the mountain just to recap all that we started with poverty of spirit and really being aware of who yeah. we are and how much we need God and then mourning for state of our spiritual condition and the condition of the world. And then we got to surrendering to God in meekness. And then we moved, as Christ said, to hungering and thirsting for God, moving from I ought to do things to I really want, want to do things. I yeah. want to be connected to God. And then we had that mountaintop experience. And now this next beatitude, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Really connect into that. Yeah. Um, because now that I've experienced that reality of who God is, I have to take that out and live it out in the world. I have Beyond to, yourself. Yeah. yeah, I have to make it change the way that I live and, and who I really am. So I have a question for you, because you're always throwing the questions at me. Today I have a question for you. Um, you know, we understand, maybe you can unpack the difference for, for those of us who, who don't necessarily know the difference between uh, what is grace and what is mercy and, uh, and how God distinguishes the two and how He um, gives us grace and gives us mercy. Well, I think a nice way to think about it is grace is getting what we don't deserve. So yes. we get God's riches, we get okay. God's favor, and we don't deserve any of that. Right. Whereas mercy is not getting what we do deserve. So we deserve punishment and we deserve death at the end of the day, but we don't get that. We are, we are extended mercy. Okay. And so that really is what, is what mercy is. And as we've ascended up this mountain, we've, we've now got to have that the way that we have experienced God impact the way we live and and this starts really with being merciful which is not just about not giving people what they deserve but it's so much broader than that it, it really speaks about compassion okay. so the heart about, of God it's about yeah, extending think, compassion um, because we have been given compassion and I think it, it naturally flows on from hungering and thirsting yes. for God because if you really care for God if, and if I really care for you I have to care about the things you care about um, and it's the same with God. If I really care about God, if I really hunger and thirst for Him, I can't but help care about the things that God cares about. And if I'm passionate about Him, I'm going to be passionate about those things okay. that matter to God. And that yeah. really is what being merciful is about. It's about extending compassion and grace um, in the world. So it's taking humility one step further, really, um, to not just um, being humble to God, but actually uh, when we show compassion to others, we're extending God's um, humility beyond ourselves yeah. um, so it's it's uh, you know we receive it and therefore we give it yeah. um, and I think that's that's really cool yeah. and I think it's it's Jesus obviously epitomizes this for us and yeah. wherever we read about Jesus we see that this was the epitome really of who he was was this compassion he was never too busy being God to <laughs> care about other yeah. people to look them in the eye to to stop to notice people mm. to care about their pain um, and I think that you know we have to look to that as an example. I love the message paraphrase of, of this verse. It says, you're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you'll, you'll find yourselves being cared for. Sure. Okay, so it's, it's this flow kind of out of the previous beatitude, um, you know, hunger and thirsting for righteousness. And um, we can't just be passionate about God. Because I think this is where, where some people get stuck. It's like, oh, we're passionate about God. We're passionate you know, about seeing God and experiencing God for ourselves. But there needs to go beyond this to actually being passionate about God's people and caring for God's people. 
um, even those who are lost, you know, so especially those who are lost, no, especially yeah. those who are lost. So mm-hmm. not just those who um, belong to Christ, not just Christians, but those who are lost and who need the saving arms of Christ. And I think this will obviously impact a lot of how we interact with people because yeah. if I am just passionate about God, but I'm not passionate about people and I don't have compassion on people. Then we don't have the heart of God. I'm, and I'm going to be yeah. very hard line with people. Then I'm going to be one of those scary fundamentalist type of people who, you know, come and Bible bash other yeah. people and, and try to win them over in terms of, well, you know, if you don't do this, you're going to go to hell and you really need it. And most people are coming from a place of really genuinely believing about God or believing in God and believing in the mission, yeah. but they've lost their compassion for people. They've lost they've, the heart of God. And yeah. I think that's that's sure. why it's so critical because we have to engage with people in a yeah. way that really shows compassion and grace. Um, and it's it's more than just feeling empathy for people. I think that's okay. the other thing is, you know, it's easy to feel empathetic and compassionate towards people, but it's actually about doing something, going beyond that and actually putting our faith into practice. That just makes perfect sense. So they say. <laughs> so those who have done the work of discipleship and have experienced this life-changing mercy of God can't withhold mercy from others yeah. um, because mercy is just lavished on us all the time. And so I think this, this plays out in two different ways. It plays out, as you were saying in the beginning, in forgiveness yeah. and in letting things go. Um, and there's that parable of the unforgiving servant, you know, where the, the king forgives him a huge debt and then there's someone who owes him a little bit of money and he has him thrown in prison but the king yeah. has forgiven him this huge debt and the king's like, what are you doing? Yeah. And we so often do that, don't we, is we hold these things against other people when yeah. you know we have been forgiven yeah. the ultimate And I think it goes debt. back to, you know, again, just like the meek, meek you know, um, the attitude. It goes back to this also kind of, people get the, the, the wrong impression of it because they think it's the, a weakness to be merciful but in fact it's a strength because you actually have to step out of what comes naturally to you you actually have to step out of going you know my natural instinct my human instinct is to just fight back um and god says no look at that's what the world has done and look at what a mess it's in you know but when we show mercy we actually break down the walls and break down the heart of the person who's fighting against you because their expectation of you is to fight back but when you're merciful um, you will almost receive mercy from them as well as God you know we read this beatitude and it's kind of like well if I'm merciful I will receive mercy and we we immediately put it into the context of God but actually you're breaking the heart of the person who is in need of your mercy Um, and when you extend that mercy you actually soften their hearts to to be receptive to what you have to say because they don't expect what you're throwing at them now. Yeah, so there's the there's the element of forgiveness in, in showing yeah. mercy, being merciful. So we have to let things go. You have to be willing to, and that's again, I think it all links from the beginning with that poverty of spirit yeah. in the morning and all of those things. Because if I keep remembering that I don't actually have it all together and that I'm not that great and that I need the forgiveness and the grace of God, then it's easier to be compassionate yeah. on other people and to to let things go. So it doesn't mean being a doormat, but it no. means being having the strength yeah. to not let those things keep a hold on me yeah. and to let things go to show people compassion. And then it also is about really reaching out to other people with love and with grace and with practical assistance, I think, to, to really help meet people's needs and to be burdened for the things that burden the heart of God. Yeah. And, you know, the scales are removed from our eyes. You know, and again, it goes back to the righteousness of God. When we are pursuing the righteousness of God, and I think this is where Stephen found himself when he's being stoned, extending mercy to those who are literally killing him. Um, he he was seeing them through the eyes of God, and he 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 understood that um, mercy was the only only way he could set himself free in that moment. Um, and I think that uh, he had the scales removed from his eyes. Um, so he could see these people um, as children of God, even though they were committing this horrible crime. Um, so that's 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 a good example of, for me of what mercy um, looks like. Absolutely, you know? and I think that you know it's so easy in our modern world to be so caught up with our own busyness. Mm-hmm. I think the image of sort of you know, I'm on my phone with my earbuds in, and that's sort of <laughs> my reality. But I have to mercy, showing mercy to others is also about 
just opening our eyes to live beyond yeah. that, to see beyond my own circumstances, my own family, my own needs, and to be willing to engage with the needs of others. And it takes stepping outside of yourself. Mm. Um, and so we need that. We need that journey up the mountain. We need that experience of God because we can't do it effectively yeah, on, on our, our own. own. It doesn't come naturally. No, it's not a, really mercy not. is not a natural reaction. Um, it's it's a, a byproduct of what God has done for us. Yeah. And I think we need to, to come to that realization now. Yeah. yeah, but I think it's so critical because as 1 Corinthians 13 tells us, yeah. there's this beautiful passage where Paul says, you know what, if I speak in the tongues of men and angels, if I do all these amazing spiritual things, but I don't have love, even if sure. I give yeah. myself as a martyr to be burned at the stake, but I don't have love, I actually have nothing. Yeah. And so we have to, the way that we represent God in the world, the way that that journey down the mountain becomes real is by actually extending compassion and love to other people. And without that, really, we have nothing. Yeah. So, blessed are the merciful.